Hi there. Let's take a look at a concept called sensitivity analysis and start with a question. How sensitive are your teeth when you brush them in the morning? Are they sensitive to cold or heat? Well, that's the kind of question that you ask yourself when you do sensitivity analysis. Not about your teeth, but about the assumptions that are used in various business forecasts. So sensitivity analysis is all about challenging and analysing the effect of changes in assumptions used in forecasts. And as we know, there are various different places in business where we may need to forecast some information. I've listed some out there on the screen. Let's pick out a couple of them. Perhaps the uh, one of the most important forecasts in business, the cash flow forecast. So we make assumptions about when cash will come into the business and how much, when will cash go out. What about investment appraisal? We clearly make assumptions there about what the project cash flows are going to be and when they arise. How likely is it that they will arise at certain times in the future? What will be the initial investment? Could that change? And of course, when we make break-even analysis and we forecast our profit, we're making assumptions about things like selling prices, variable cost per unit and forecasts of fixed costs. So business forecasts are full of assumptions and sensitivity analysis allows us to challenge those assumptions. It asks questions like how reliable are the assumptions made? What happens if things turn out significantly differently? And also, which assumptions are most significant? Which are the ones that we need to forecast, uh, focus on in our forecast? So sensitivity analysis helps us answer these kind of questions. Let's uh, take a look at an example of sensitivity analysis, which is often called what-if analysis. This is particularly useful when you're looking at sales and profit forecasts. And our little example here is going to use a forecast profit. And you may want to have a go at this and pause the video at a couple of stages to work out some numbers. So if uh, you do so, pause the video now and grab a, a pencil or paper and a calculator and we'll work through this for the next minute or two. Here's our, uh, here's our small scenario. Managers at a business are forecasting the profit they hope to achieve next year and they've made some assumptions here. Selling price per unit of £100 per unit. Variable cost per unit of £30 per unit, fixed cost for the year of £500,000 and forecast sales of 10,000 units. Now, if you want to have a go at this, have a go, pause the video and try to calculate what you believe the forecast profit is for this business based on those assumptions. Let's uh, take a look. If you've had a go at doing that, that's cool. If not, let's look at what the forecast profit is. And the answer is £200,000 because... If you apply those assumptions, uh, 10,000 units at £100 per unit must mean revenue of a million pounds. Our variable costs, 10,000 units at £30 each, are £300,000. Don't forget our fixed costs, £500,000. So the difference, profit is the difference between revenue, variable costs and fixed costs, and it's £200,000. So our forecast is 200000 but we've made some assumptions there. So how sensitive is this forecast to those assumptions? And what happens if we change them? That's the beauty of sensitivity analysis. So what we'll do is we'll just spend a minute having a look to see what happens if our assumptions were worse by 10% for each of the four assumptions. So rather than the selling price per unit being £100, it's £90. Rather than the variable cost per unit being £30, it's actually 10% worse, £33 per unit. And similarly for fixed costs, they are higher than expected and forecast sales 10% lower than expected. Now again, if you want to have a go, have a go at calculating the forecast profit by making each of those changes. Not all together, but what's the impact of making one change at a time? For example, just changing the selling price from 100 pounds to 90. So again, if you want to have a go, pause the video, and then we'll go through what those impacts are. For those of you still with me, we're gonna go through the effects, and maybe if you've just joined Back here, having had a go at one or two calculations, let's see how your numbers compare with my numbers. Well, the effect is, by changing one variable at a time, what-if analysis, that the forecast profit is always going to be worse, because our assumptions are 10% worse, but the impact on forecast profit is different. So just to show that in uh, absolute terms, and also the percentage terms, if we lower the selling price from 100 to 90 pounds per unit, the forecast profit falls from £200,000 
to £100,000. That's a 50% fall. Similarly, if we uh, let's take the bottom one there. If we uh, sell ten, uh, if we sell nine thousand units, not ten thousand units, so one thousand fewer units than we forecast. If our assumption is ten percent worse, the effect on profit is that the profit is one hundred and thirty thousand pounds, which is thirty five percent down. And so we should be able to see from those calculations the sensitivity of the forecast to the four different assumptions there. And we can see, just using the highlighter here, that the selling price per unit turns out to be the assumption which is most sensitive in terms of the effect on the forecasts. 50% down by changing a 10% uh, by a fall in the selling price of 10%. So there we go, that's an example of a sensitivity analysis. Our forecast profit is £200,000, but we just check to see what happens if we vary the assumptions and we find out that the most significant assumption is this selling price of uh, £100 per unit. Well, what does that mean? What does that show? What are the benefits and drawbacks of sensitivity analysis? Well, clearly a benefit is that we can focus on the most significant assumptions. So on that previous example there, how confident are we that we'll achieve a selling price per unit of £100? Could it be that we have to achieve or offer a much lower selling price to achieve the forecast sales units, particularly if demand is price sensitive. And of course, it helps us challenge our forecast, challenge our assumptions, which is always good in business. The worst thing in business is to have overly optimistic forecasts, and then you're constantly having to explain and work out why things aren't as good as they, you thought they were going to be. One of the drawbacks of sensitivity analysis, as with all uh, appraisal te techniques like this, is that you're only as good as the forecasts that you make and the assumptions you make and you're only testing one assumption at a time. So is that a drawback? I'm not sure it's too much of a drawback. I think it's a good, uh, it's, a, it's a, a robust and valid way of challenging a forecast made in business. You might argue that sensitivity analysis is a complicated concept. I'm not sure that's uh, entirely valid either. But nevertheless, there are some potential drawbacks to the use of sensitivity analysis. So there we go. That's what, six minutes, seven minutes, an introduction to and hopefully a useful example of sensitivity analysis.